How's it going everyone? My name is Jake and recently I've been getting some requests to do videos on the proper use of EQ, compression, and reverb and that kind of thing. Um, so essentially I thought that was a great idea. So here's the first one. Let's jump into this video and start talking about EQ. But before we can really jump into the proper use of EQ, what you really need to understand is the structure of sound. Now we know EQ has to deal with altering frequencies of sound, but what is a frequency? We identify specific frequencies in hertz. And what hertz means is essentially it's a measure of the number of cycles per second that a sound vibration has. So as you can see here, one cycle in one second means that vibration would be one hertz and so on and so forth. Uh, in Western music, we use this thing called A440, which means that the A note that we tune to is at 440 hertz and we tune relative, like each note relative to A440. Now, every instrument is comprised of more than just one frequency, and this is why EQ has such an important effect in our mixes. Every element has a fundamental frequency, or a first harmonic, as you can see in this graph, um, but it also has many other harmonics that have some relation to the fundamental. These harmonics is what makes the sonic element unique. It's what makes you know a guitar sound like a guitar. It's what makes a trumpet sound like a trumpet. So harmonics essentially are what we end up changing in EQ. And that's what you know we take out or boost the ones that we want to accentuate. So in a mix, we have multiple elements, all with their own unique frequency content. The more elements you have, the more likely each more likely they are to start intruding on each other and this can affect the clarity of the entire mix. This being said, the primary, primary point of mixing is to make sure everything sounds good and also that everything can be heard clearly, have its own sonic space. So there are three primary goals we aim to accomplish with EQ specifically. So there are three primary goals, primary goals that we aim to accomplish with EQ. The first is to fix any harmonic issues that is present in the sound. Um, these imperfections can come from a lot of different things in regards to music. It can come from the musician's, musician's play style. It can come from the way the element was recorded or even just the quality of the instrument, how the instrument was built that is maybe presenting some harmful or not great sounding qualities of the instrument. Um, no matter what it is, you want to get rid of it, and this is essentially what EQ is for. Now, some people are very good at recognizing where in the frequency, spe frequency spectrum a problem frequency is located. However, this is not the case for most of us. So I have a few tricks here to help you find these problem frequencies and how to get rid of them. So let's go over to a mix here. All right, so I pulled up a mix here. As you can see, there's a lot of tracks in here, so obviously there's going to be a lot of uh, contrasting sounds that kind of intrude on one, in, one another's sonic space. However, what I want to kind of show you here is one track here. I'm going to play this guitar part, and the reason why I chose this one is because it has all three of these issues. First of all, the guitarist was pretty new to the instrument, didn't have a lot of experience. Second of all, the guitar was recorded rather poorly and wasn't recorded, you know, in a proper manner. And third of all, the guitar was pretty beat up. So there's three issues here that kind of come together to really affect the sound negatively. So what we want to do is we want to pull up our EQ and see how much of this we can fix. And I'm going to show you the way that I go about finding these problem frequencies. So pull up, you know, uh, a normal EQ. This is the EQ7 band. It's, you know, a normal, it's a stock plugin in, uh, in Pro Tools. Anybody can find it as long as you have Pro Tools. So what I tend to do is something called sweeps. What this means is essentially you bring your Q, which is affects the amount of frequencies that will be affected. And you boost that frequency by 18 dB or as much as you can. And then you start sweeping the frequency range up and down until you start to hear frequencies that are very harmful 
and do not help the instrument. This, what this does is essentially allows you to find those frequencies a lot easier. If you listen right there, it has a lot of extra noise in the sustain of that note. So what we do is from there, we usually bring it down. You don't want to bring it down too, too much. Maybe start around 3 dB to 4 dB and kind of work with it from there. Sometimes you want to take out a little bit more depending on how bad it is. But then you keep going. You do this for as many ranges as you can, trying to take out as many bad frequencies as possible. But just like I said, by boosting it all the way, it allows you to hear each frequency 18 dB louder than it normally is. So essentially, when you hear those por those negative frequencies that are hurting the, s the quality of the guitar, then you will know a lot easier which ones are bad. Has a lot of ringing. So in the end result, let's see what we have. Has a lot of muddy frequencies, and that's what I was noticing. And by taking at taking at these certain frequencies, it clears up a lot of that muddiness, makes the guitar more clear, and by doing so, it's gonna make the guitar stand out in the mix. All right, so the second thing that we aim to accomplish with EQ is essentially we wanna create a harmonic space for each element in your mix. As I mentioned earlier, as you begin to add elements, chances are that several of these elements are gonna be competing with each other sonically. So what we wanna do is designate a specific frequency range for each element so that each element kinda of sits in its own spot and comes through the mix with clarity. So let's, let's go back to our mix here and take a look at how we should do this. Okay, so here we are, back at our mix. What I usually find is something that usually con like com competes with each other quite often is the bass and the kick drum. So let's go ahead and solo these here. We're gonna unsolo our guitar. And we're gonna pull up two more sets of EQ. One for our bass and one for our kick. All right, so as you can hear, It's already very hard to kind of hear the bass. The bass does not have as much power as the kick, and the kick is kind of taking over. So let's try and fix this up a little bit here. So what I my my technique that I usually end up doing is I end up deciding that I want the bass to fill up the lower end of the frequency spectrum and the kick to kind of be in that next little section of the EQ spectrum. So my first move that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a high pass filter to kind of make room for our bass. So I'm gonna bring up our high pass filter to let's say 120 Hertz. Leaves enough room for the, for the, for the bass while still giving the kick some power. And now that I know that that the, kit, that the kick is being cut off around 120. I wanna add something a little bit higher just to kind of solidify in the frequency spectrum where the kick is gonna be. So I'm gonna bring our low mid frequency down to around 20 and I'm gonna start doing some sweeps to find a frequency in the kick that sounds, that sounds powerful. So I ended up settling in on about 139 here. Let's see what it sounds like. So now we know that our kick is being boosted around 139. So let's go take a look at our bass here and see how we're gonna kind of contrast these two elements here. And the first thing that I wanna do is because I know the bass, the kick drum gets cut off around 120 hertz, as you can see here, I wanna bring up some of the bass below that 120 hertz. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise the cue on my low frequency band here 
and let's start around 50 hertz and see where we can make the bass ha fill up in that low end. So I decided around 74 hertz was sounding pretty strong and it just kind of gives that fills out that low end a little bit. Awesome. Now the final thing that I want to do kind of just to bring in this point is something that you can do to help really contrast. And because we know we boosted around 139 for the kick, what we can do here is literally go to 139 in our low mid frequency range and take some of this out. And there you go. So that's something, that's a, a general way of how you can kind of start to sculpt your own frequency spectrum on instruments that share a lot of the same frequency content. So the final thing we want to acknowledge with EQ is featuring certain frequencies within an element. Now this is not necessarily, and you definitely need to be careful with this, because when you add frequencies, you add more than just that one frequency that you think sounds good. Take a look at this graph that I have up on screen here. As you can see, they're boosting 200 hertz around 6 dB. Now, if you also look to where it says 500 hertz, that is also being boosted around 3 dB. And just because something sounds good at 200 does not mean it's going to be sounding good at 500 hertz. 500 hertz. So what you could be doing is essentially be muddying up the mix. So it's very important that you listen with your ears while you're boosting and make sure that what you're boosting actually sounds good. Now I want to give you one more tip, one more kind of walkthrough here to show you uh, a tip on how to boost frequencies. So here we are back at our mix here. Let's see what we got. Um, I'm going to pull up this piano part. Feel like we could we could add some frequencies into this so once again i'm just going to pull up our stock plugin to keep consistent here now what i want to what i want to be listening for here as i said listening will be the key part when you boost frequencies is what i'm when i'm boosting something by 18 db i'm going to be looking for subtle changes things that do not affect the overall sound but essentially accentuate what's already there we don't want to be adding any coloration which happens a lot when you boost so this is what i tend to do let's go to our mid frequencies here because we were talking about uh, a keyboard here the nord and we're going to start around 500 hertz and we're going to be listening for subtle changes that's sounding pretty clear clean to me Nothing is sounding bad around this one, 1.05k. So to be realistic, we're going to bring this down. So we're around 6 dB here. And there you have it. Let's see how, how much that helped. As you can tell, it's very subtle, but it still essentially helps bring up the natural elements of this instrument and helps give it a bit more character. So there it is guys, fix, fit, and feature. Those are the three keywords that you should think about while using EQ. This is probably one of the most important parts of your mix and is probably, and if done right, it can really save and make great mixes. But you know, if it is done improperly, your mix can end up sounding worse than what you started with. So just try to remember these three steps in order of importance. And always remember, it's about what you hear, not about what you see on the processor. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope you learned something. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.